So our first part of our lecture is going to be on clippers. And I'm going to go ahead and start drawing out. You guys can follow along. Uh, if I were you, I would try to just uh, draw the uh, circuits as I draw them. So you have them ready for your notes. But like I say, it is recording. So you'll have to be able to reference that later. So these are diode clip. Uh, now there's two name words for, we call them clippers, but you can also call them limiters. Okay, or clippers. Right, so diode limiters or clippers, and most time we refer to them as clippers. Again, we're dealing with AC input. All right, so here we have our first uh, typical type of clipper circuit. And as you can see, we have our diode, we have R1 and RL. At this point, we're not, I'm not concerned about trying to uh, calculate the values of our wave of our output. What we need to understand is what the output would actually look like. All right, based on this circuit configuration and based on the direction of the diode. So to begin with, which way does current flow through the diode? Who can tell me? Negative to positive? Negative to positive, right? So it always flows negative to positive and that's based on electron flow. Okay, we can say if it was conventional flow, it would flow the other way, but this class is based on electron flow and so is your book. So the current flows from negative to positive. Now, in order for us to bias, all right, or cause the diode to conduct, what, must, what conditions must be met? Who can tell me? This is all just our basic diode um, configurations right now. We're just trying to determine, again, that we've already talked about what conditions must be met on our diode for conduction to take place. I don't know if this is the one you're looking for, but a uh, uh, resistor has to be connected in series. <laughs> okay, that and that's a good question. So we. What was the purpose of that resistor being connected in series to a diode? Just for the heck of it. Do you remember what that was? Is that the halfway rectifier? Um, this is similar to that. Yes, this is very good. This is similar to a halfway rectifier, but um, uh, I don't remember who it was that brought it up. Um, the, the putting a resistor in series with a diode, what was the purpose of that? Do you remember? to prevent damage from uh, current to the diode uh, okay. from excessive current flow. Excellent, excellent. That's it, Artem, good. So it just helps us to reduce the current flow from having such a high surge 
of current, right? So, I mean, I'm sure you guys have had uh, uh, power flickers and stuff like that in your home, uh, and those spikes can cause problems with uh, electronic equipment. So a lot of times we have these resistors in series with our diodes to help us with those spikes or sudden surges of current through the diode, all right? So that's all good, that's all true. But on this condition right here, let's think about the diode again for a second. What conditions must be met for the diode to conduct, to have current flowing through it? 0.7 volts through it, running through it. Uh, no, that, well, that's what's going to be dropped. That's good. That's, you're going to have that voltage drop across the diode. When Does it, it need to be up. forward biased? I'm sorry? Uh, the diode needs to be forward biased to conduct. Okay, very good. So now let's take it one more step further. What, in order to forward bias this diode, what condition must be met on the diode? The negative to negative and positive to positive. Okay, so we need to have a positive, right? We need to have a positive on the anode and a negative, of course, on the cathode side. Very good. So we have to have a positive condition on the anode and a negative condition on the, or a, a less positive, I should say, on the cathode, okay? So this will, this will give us the, 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 the condition in which our current can flow through the diode when this is met. So let's take a look at our output, I mean our input for a second. So we have our input and our first pulse that's coming through is a positive, right, is a positive. So that means that we have the positive up here and the negative down here. Now this is something you've seen before, uh, but we're going to get a little more into it a little bit more uh, with the details. So if we have a positive up here, that positive is going to be felt all the way up to here, correct? Now, is the condition of the diode uh, ready to forward bias, or do you think it's reverse bias at this moment? Forward? Forward. It's forward bias. Very good. Because we have met our conditions for the diode. We've placed a positive on the anode and a negative on the cathode. So our negative is down here, and then we have a negative, positive, and so forth. Now, here's where we have to start keeping in mind of what's actually happening. We have this, let me change this color. We have this load right here, all right? Not concerned about the value, but we have a load resistor and what relationship is the load with the diode at this moment? What kind of relationship are they in? Parallel. Parallel. Very good. Parallel. Now, if you remember back in your ELC 125 days, uh, parallel is going to do what? What Basically, what kind of output will we have across that load if this is in parallel? What would it be seeing? It, it would be the same voltage as... The other rung. Okay, so we had you just so you mentioned that we have these two, these two right here are in parallel, correct? Yeah, so they share the same voltage. Ah, so so in this case, if my diode is forward biased, what would I have across my load? 0.7 volts. 0.7 volts, perfect, because don't we have a 0.7 volt drop across that diode right now? Because it's in forward bias. We do have our positive here and our negative down here. So we do have a forward bias. But here's where it starts to get a little bit tricky. It's our waveform on the output. So if I have my waveform on the output, all right, and we know that we're going to have 0.7 volts across the load, how is my waveform going to react to that on this first half pulse of the positive? What do you think is going to be the output on the waveform on that first half cycle? What value? 0.7 volts. 0.7 volts, perfect. So here's what's happening. We're gonna say as this 
as this is going up, because right now, let's look at this for a second. We have our zero reference line and we have our AC input coming in. So in this condition right here, we're gonna start going up, 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 okay, until what? Can you guys see that? Right here, I'm starting to go up, 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 all right? That is gonna to continue to go up on our output until what? How much voltage do we have to have across that diode for it to conduct? 0 0.7. 0 0.7. When I first start at my zero reference and I have zero, right? What's going to happen? Will my it, output, say, say that again? Would it go to 0 0.7 and then start oscillating, I guess? Okay, you're on the right track. Okay, you're on the right track. So it's going to start moving up, right? But it can't, this diode is not going to conduct until we hit 0 0.7 volts on our input. And let's just say that's somewhere around here, okay? So on my output, it's going to start going up, 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 up. And then all of a sudden, what's going to happen? It's going to shoot to zero. Okay, not zero. Uh, uh, I don't know what then. So remember, we're, we're, we're going up, 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 up until we get to what point? Would it be 0 0.7 to con continue current flow? Oh, perfect. Okay, so it's going to continue to 0 0.7. When it hits 0 0.7, we start having conduction through our diode. If we have conduction through our diode, that means that RL is now reading... 0 0.7 volts. So it's going to stay steady just like this. And in this case, our output here is going to be 0 0.7 volts at this peak right here. Because we made it up to 0 0.7 volts. And now that we have conduction through our diode, the RL or the load is actually reading that 0 0.7 volts. Does that make sense? Is anybody not sure of how this works? This is really important. So the diode uh, determines what voltage is on the other side? Sorry, say that again, Leroy. The diode can, does what? It, uh, it determines what's on the other side, of, like on the resistor side. You mean on the this load right here? Yeah, the load, yeah, on that yeah. load. Okay. That is correct. That is correct. So that diode is going to tell us what's on that load. Or the load, yeah, exactly. So the load is going to reflect what's across the diode. Yes. Okay. Good question. Thanks. Okay. I don't know why, but that output waveform looks like a weird capacitor. <laughs> yeah it does it's just weird it is but so here's the next question so as my signal so we started off over here and we came up we're already hitting our peak up here and we're starting to go down right so at what point at what point when i start going back down is my output over here going to start going back down. At what point will that be? Under 0 0.7 volts. All right, excellent. It's going to be at 0 0.7 volts, right? So once this gets down to 0 0.7 volts, let's just say this is at 0 0.7 volts now at this point, then What's going to happen to my diode from that point down? As far as conduction is concerned. It'll no longer be able to conduct to overcome the barrier. Excellent. Excellent. So our output is going to start dropping down. And then we're going to stop right there for a second. 
and it is now down back down to zero. So between the initial 0.7 and the other side of that first half cycle at 0.7, we have this conduction in between of 0.7 because our diode is conducting during that time. Does that make sense? Okay, if you're not understanding, let me know. Okay, so that is for the first half cycle. That is our positive half cycle. So now let's take a look and see what happens when our negative half cycle starts to come through. So here we have our negative side. And in this case, our negative is now up here. Our positive is here. So if we bring that over, we have our negative here and our positive here. So for this part of the cycle, what do you think the output waveform is going to look like on the, on the second half of this cycle? And why? It's just gonna be zero because it's, uh, it's reverse bias. Okay, it's reverse bias. Now, you have to remember, you have to keep in mind what happens to a diode. What does a diode act like in reverse bias? Uh, short, so it would all go to the load? No, no. It, a reverse bias diode doesn't act like a short. It's a switch, so it's open. Open, yeah. There you go. There you go. So it acts like a switch, so it, it's going to be open. So in that case, that means technically on this part, our diode here is not even there anymore. It's like taking it out of the circuit. <clears throat> if it acts like an open and it is taken out of the circuit, what's gonna happen on the negative pulse of the output across the load? <clears throat> it, it'll, it'll have the full voltage. Okay, who said that? Brett. Brett, awesome it is gonna have the full waveform on the output. So that means on the negative pulse, it's gonna come out just like this. And this is gonna be our negative pulse coming out. Does, does everybody see that? Because here, here, this is not, it's not just important for understanding uh, diode limiters and clampers and so forth. But when we get into the last part of this semester, when we're talking about transistors, it's gonna be really important. So you, you have to understand the foundation of how this diode functions in a circuit. So now is the time. If you have questions, please ask so that you have a good understanding of what's happening. I just one question about the construction. So when we're dealing with a, a limiter or a clipper, really it's just the way the um, diode and certain resistors are arranged that make it function the way that it does, correct? Like there's nothing for lack of a better term, magical about it. It's just the way that you arrange the, um, the resistance. Okay, and for the most part, that is absolutely true, okay? So the resistors, we're gonna be playing, a, they're gonna be playing a part here in just a second when we start doing calculations. But yes, the resistors and the diode position, more importantly, the position of the diode, okay? The position of the diode. And we're gonna change this up here in just a second. But yes, that is a very good analysis. So just think about the position of the diode. Whenever you see this type of position, whenever you see your diode in this position with the anode on the top side and the cathode on the bottom side, we know that our output waveform is going to look like this. Now the value of this is gonna be determined, of course, by our resistance values, which we're not talking about right now. But yes, that is, that is a good analogy. Anybody else? Okay, so let's try something different.
So let's turn our diode around. And let's start again. We have the same input, okay, for our sinusoidal waveform. And we're gonna start off again with the positive side. So we have our positive and our negative. Now those values, those polarities carry over to here, positive and negative. And then we're gonna look at our output waveform and see what happens with this. So in this case, is our diode forward or reverse bias? And reverse. Why? Reverse bias, and why is that? Because uh, the anodes on the uh, with the positive and the cathodes with the negative. Um, say that again. The the negatives on the wrong side. Okay, because uh, the negative now has, what is the negative attached to basically on the diode, the anode or cathode? Uh, that's the cathode. So here's our negative right here. And which part is this of the diode? Anode? Anode, right? So the big diode, the big triangle there is always the anode, which is anode is the positive. So these are opposing. They're not the same. They have to be the same. So on our other side here, we have our cathode. And what polarity, what voltage do we have on that cathode right now? What voltage is sitting on that cathode at this moment, on this first half cycle? I mean, positive? Positive, right? Don't we have the positive right up here? So if the positive is on that cathode, which is the negative side, then they're opposing. They're not the same. And they have to be the same for us to have conduction. All right. So on this first half cycle here, what do you think my waveform on the output is gonna look like for the first half cycle? The input wave. Very good, the input waveform. Why, and why is that? Because now it's just all going across the resistors. Okay, so it's going across the resistors and there's a reason for that. What is, what is the reason for that? Remember, uh, always so keep in mind. It's, it's like it's like the diode's being shorted. Nope. <laughs> Open. Open. <laughs> I keep mixing them up. Yeah. I know it's not there. I'm just getting the names different. Uh, yeah, th that's okay. So <laughs> just remember, a shorted is going to have zero volts. So an open is infinite. There's nothing there. So, but that is correct. So we're going to have our output waveform coming out based on our input because now the diode is in reverse bias. And as a reverse bias diode, it is considered to be open or not even there. So let's take a look at the other half, which is our negative side. And we're gonna say negative, positive, and then negative, positive. Now what's happening with our diode? It'll go to a negative 0 0.7 and then it'll level out there until the cycle ends. That, oh, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Good job, Brett. So our output is going to go, start coming down till it gets to 0 0.7 volts and then shoot across like you just said and then it's gonna go back up again. So in this case, we're gonna have a negative 0 0.7 volts peak on the negative pulse coming in. Perfect, nice work. So that means that we have forward bias on our diode because now current is actually flowing through the diode 
And since it is flowing through the diode, we create a 0 0.7 volt drop across that diode. Hence, the RL is in parallel with it. So that means whatever is across that diode is also going to be across this load resistor. So here we have, in this condition, here is a circuit. And can you guys see that okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we have a circuit. And basically, uh, don't worry about the frequency. This is just set up just to give you an idea of how it functions. So in this case, what do you think my output is going to look like? Who, who can describe it to me before we actually look at it? Say you have the positive pulse coming through first, okay, and then the negative. What's my output waveform going to look like? Uh, the positive pulse would be clipped and the negative pulse wouldn't be? All right, excellent. That's perfect. So the positive pulse is going to be clipped, right? Because on the positive pulse, we have, right, we have here on this, we got our positive here, right, coming in. And then we have our positive on here, which that means the negative is down here. And then of course the negative is gonna be over here. So that forward biases it. When it forward biases, we have that clipping on the positive pulse. All right, very good. So let's take a look at this and let's just see what happens. So this will give you, I hope this will give you a better understanding anyway. So if you look at the conduction, all right, who can tell me looking at the direction of these, of the current flow, with these dots, all right, at what cycle or what half cycle of the input is the diode conducting? The positive? The positive, right? Because isn't, doesn't the diode right here, doesn't it conduct only when the positive is actually, the positive half cycle is actually on our circuit? So when this is conducting, it, the current is flowing against the arrow, like we said before, electron flow. And then when on the negative side comes, so the negative side is going to be running across this way because this diode acts like an open, like it's not even there. Correct? So let's see what that looks like on our output waveform. So here we have our output waveform. All right. And if you notice, I'm going to pause this. And right about there. So we're going to pause this for a second and let's take a look at this output waveform. In this case right here, we said that whatever the output waveform was on the positive half cycle, our output should be about 0.7 volts. So in this case, we see that this line right here is, is 800 milli or 0.7 volts. And this line right here, this clipping, is right about 0.7 volts. So it's cutting off at that point. And if you look at this, if we draw a dashed line all the way down to our input signal, now this is the input AC sine wave that we have coming into our circuit, that this positive peak right here is now, has now been clipped off at 0.7 volts. Does that make it any better to understand? Yeah. Okay, so it's easy. It's easier to see that when, when the circuit is actually running, what's actually happening, because now on the negative side of it, we have our output based on this negative input is going to be based on whatever the values are, of course, with our resistors, and we'll do those calculations in a little bit. So we have our full half cycle basically coming through on the output of our uh, circuit. All right, so now that we have a better understanding, let's start looking at how do we, how do we calculate the actual values, all right, of our output waveform. And the one part that's gonna be the easiest, which you guys have already done, is knowing that our output on the clip side of it, okay, our output on the clip side of it is going to be what? What value? 
0.7, right? 0.7. All right, so let's let's look at this. Let's clear this up. Uh, let's see what. Let's just start off with another one. So here we are, still dealing with clippers, and we're going to go ahead and now calculate our true voltage on both sides, the positive positive peak and the negative peak. Okay, so we're going to determine what our waveform looks like and also what the value of both sides of our waveform will be. So our formula for this, for V peak out, is going to equal RL divided by our R1 plus RL and then times V peak in. Okay, so I want you to, first of all, calculate, you're gonna use the chat box, you're gonna send me your value, okay, for the V peak out of this circuit, all right? The V peak out of this circuit. And just direct message me so I can see what you come up with. Okay, whenever you do this, I want you to tell me the, the peak value of both the positive and negative side of this waveform. Tell me the value of both the positive and negative side of the waveform. Okay, so, all right, uh, so Luigi, tell me if, uh, which, par which part that is, the uh, positive or negative, because you'll need values based on that. All right, Martin, um, you got that value right, but you need to tell me, that's only half of it, so you need to tell me what the other part is and whether if it's positive or negative. Okay, so uh, Artem, you got the values right, but I need you to think again about the polarities. Look at the direction of the diode. All right, Jared, that's good. 
but you still have the other side to go. That's only one part of the pulse. Okay, uh, Luigi, the, the positive looks good. Check, double check your V out again on the negative side. Okay, double check that again. Artem, that's perfect. Good job. Uh, Tess, double check your uh, positive again. The negative looks good. Okay, Brent, those values are good, but you got to let me know what is positive and what is negative. All right, Brett, perfect. Nice work. Good job. Okay, Theo, double check your negative value again, okay? The positive part is very good, but you need to check your negative side again. You guys are doing good. Keep it up. Let's make sure you get this down. All right, Luigi, that is perfect. That is perfect. So that is a negative value. Good job. All right, so the rest of you guys keep it up. Let's see what you come up with, okay? Just do the calculations and throw your numbers up there so we can see where you are. Still missing several people. If you're stuck or not sure, please uh, just send me a text uh, put it in the chat so I know that you're, um, you're still trying, but you're stuck. A 
Okay, okay. All right, we're gonna help, don't worry. We're gonna make sure you get it. Thanks for letting me know. Uh, nope, Theo. Nope, that is not right. Um, I'll show you. Don't worry. I'm going to show you what's what's going on here in a second. Okay, uh, Leroy, your values are right, but you need to check your polarities again. Your values are correct, but it's the polarities that are not right. All right, let's go ahead and look at this one for a second. We're gonna do a couple more just to make sure you have it. So let's take a look at this. Here we have, here we have our 15 volts peak coming in. So this is our positive, right? And then this is, of course, our negative side. On the positive side, we have our positive here. And we have our positive and our negative. We have our positive here and our negative here. This positive carries over to this side, negative carries over to this side. At this point, at this point in time, is our diode forward or reverse bias? Who can reversed. Tell okay, it's reverse bias, right? Because we have this positive right here basically on our cathode, which is the negative. So it's reverse bias. If, and it is, reverse bias, what does the diode act like? An open? An open. If it acts like an open, then what is going to happen to our output on this first half cycle of the positive side? It'll take after the positive uh, waveform minus the resistance. Okay, very good. So let's just draw the waveform. That's perfect. So it's just going to follow through, right? It's going to follow right on through because our diode is technically not really there because it's open. So whatever this first part of this waveform is coming in, it's just going to go right on through all the way to the output. And on the output, we have that positive pulse. Okay, let's not worry about the values at the moment, but we have that positive volt, uh, pulse. So now when we have our negative pulse coming in, the other part of this, which is right here, and our positive is down here, is the diode going to be forward or reverse bias? One or a second pulse, the, the negative side of this pulse, is it going to be forward or reverse bias? It would be forward, right? Correct, right? Because we have our negative here, which is felt on our cathode, which needs a negative value. And of course, our positive is right here, which needs a positive value on the anode. So it's going to be forward bias. So our output for this second half of the waveform is going to do what? What is it gonna look like?
Remember, if the diode is forward biased, RL, our load right here, is going to what? What's it going to do in relation to the diode? It's going to drop to negative 0.7 volts and then stay there until uh, it goes back up above that amount. Perfect, Brett. Perfect. So it's going to mimic whatever the diode is, go down and then right back up again when the cycle starts to change again. Now, since this is in the negative region, which is 0.7 volts right here, it's on the negative side of our graph. So this is a negative value. This is going to be on the positive side of our graph. And we know that you guys came up with what value of the peak of this? What was the value that you came up with? Ten point five eight volts. Okay, ten point five eight, or it's rounded off to ten point five nine peak. Okay, either one of those are fine. So now we know what happens in this configuration when we have our sinusoidal waveform come into our circuit. We know how to calculate for our volts peak out. And basically this value is what we're what's going to determine, or this formula is what's going to determine the value at this point. This value is determined by what? What is that 0 0.7 determined? What is that value? Where did it come from? The diode. The diode, right? The diode. So we're, this, that's why this formula here has nothing to do with the diode. We already know that the diode is going to drop that 0.7 volts because it's going to be clipping, all right? It's going to be clipping on the negative side. So now that we have this and we understand a little bit more about this circuit, the way it works, let's change it up and let's change some values. And then let's see what the output waveform is going to look like again. You guys are still having questions, please ask. All right. So now we're going to have a 12 volt value. So let's, let's be clear about something. What is my peak to peak value? 24 volts. 24 volts. Perfect. Okay. All we do is sum the two peaks up to get us a 24 volt peak to peak. Our R1 for this example is going to be 4.7 K. And our load is going to be 3.3 K ohms. So I want you guys to, to do the calculations again, just like you did before and send them to the chat so I can check them. And let's see what you come up with for these values.
Uh, okay, Brett, just let me know what it is, Brett. <laughs> Okay, Luigi, uh, Luigi, double check your uh, negative value. Double check your negative value. All right, uh, Artem, double check your positive value. All right, Brett, that's it. Good job. All right, Theo, perfect. Nice work. Tess, perfect. Good job. Artem, there you go. Nice. All right, Micaiah, double check your V out again. Okay, double check your V out. The numbers look good, but the total value there, you, I'm not sure how you came up with the extra. Uh, just double check the V out again on your calculations. Martin, look at the uh, circuit again, all right? Look at the position of the diode and look at the uh, polarities again. All right, Leroy, that is correct, good job. Uh, Luigi, check your, check your output again, your value for output. If you're still stuck or you have a, you know, you're not sure about it, please put that in the chat box so I know. Okay, no problem, Micaiah. Make sure you get it. Leroy, perfect. That is correct. And I'll make sure you understand why it's correct. Martin, that is correct. Hey, Luigi, no problem. So make sure that you understand here in just a second.
Sam, how you doing? Dylan, how you doing? Oh, sorry, what was that? <laughs> so how you doing on your calculations? Oh, I, uh, sorry, I just actually came back from a call. <laughs> okay, so try to get that, try to calculate this real quick. Let me see. And then put it in the chat box so I can see your answer. Hey, if you're stuck, just let me know. Uh, which one is the bolt peak in? Is that the 12? Yes, that's the 12 bolts peak in. Okay. So keep working on it. Uh, so let's look at this circuit for a minute, guys. All right, so here we have, we have our 12 volts peak in, right? We have our positive pulse coming out first, which means our on the bottom side is our negative. That positive pulse is carried over to here. Our negative is carried over to here. And in this condition, is our diode forward or reverse bias? Reversed. Reverse bias, okay. And what does that say for our diode? What condition is the diode in? What does it act like? An open. An open, so theoretically, we don't even see it there. It's not even there. So what is our waveform on this first half cycle going to look like on the output? It's whatever voltage passes through RL. Okay, so it's whatever. And what's passing through RL right now on the output? Uh, you want the actual calculated one or the, the, the 12 volts? It just the just the the shape of the output. That's all. Oh, the positive, positive. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. So it's going to be the positive, right? It's going to pass through the positive side. Okay. So this is going to pass through because the diode is reverse bias. It acts like it's not there. So the signal is just going to go right on through to the output, right across our load. Okay. Now we have our negative side coming through. Negative, positive, okay, positive here, follows across, and negative here. So is our diode forward or reverse bias? Is it forward this time? Forward, right? Because don't we have a negative here? And we need a negative on our cathode because the cathode side is negative. So they add up, they match up. So in the same way, we have our positive here, which also matches up with our anode, which is positive as well. So on our output waveform, on the second half of this, on the negative side of our waveform, 
What is our output waveform going to look like? It's going to be negative. Negative and negative how much? 0 0.7, the value of the diode. Perfect. It's going to be 0 0.7. It's going to come down to 0 0.7 and go back up. So here we're going to have a negative 0 0.7 volts on our output. And then what was the value that you came up with for the top up here? 4.95. 4.95 volts peak. And this is, of course, the positive side. Does anybody not see this? Does anybody not understand how we get this? Now, the one thing I think that you guys are doing, uh, that some of you are doing, uh, I might be wrong here, but I think you are trying to use this formula right here for this part of the diode. And you can't do that. This formula is used for the peak side that's coming out because when this is forward bias, RL is going to be nothing but rep, uh, image, um, imaging, basically, what's across the diode. So whatever, across, whatever the voltage is across that diode, that's what RL sees. There is no formula for that, all right? It's just a parallel circuit. And we know that in parallel, our voltages are going to be the same. Hey, any questions on this before we do another one? All right. Let's do another one here. We want to make sure that you guys have this down. This is really important. All right, so for this one, we're gonna have seven volts. This is the positive side, and then the negative side, seven volts peak. For R1, we're gonna have 2.2K. For RL, 2.7K. Same thing, in the chat box, tell me what you come up with for the values of our output waveform. Brett, nice work. Perfect. Good job. All right, Dylan, uh, let me know what part of that. Is it positive, negative? Which, which part of the waveform is it? Luigi, perfect. Okay, Dylan. So Dylan, I just need the negative part of the pulse. What value is that going to be? Artem, that's perfect. Nice work. Micaiah, nice work. That's perfect. You guys are getting it. All right, Martin, good job. Theo, good job. You got it.
So Luigi, uh, just make sure I understand what you're saying here. Just whenever the diode is in forward bias, it's going to be that 0.7 volts. Whether it's negative or positive, it just depends on the direction of the diode. But yes, Luigi, whenever the diode is forward biased, then it will be 0.7 volts. Tess, good job. Nope. Dylan, check again. See if the diode is reversed or forward biased. You're welcome, Luigi. Hey, Leroy, that's good for the positive side. Let's see what you come up with for the negative. All right, Leroy, perfect. Nice work. Exactly right. If you're still stuck, please let me know. If you are stuck, uh, let me know. Give me a little description of why you're stuck or having a problem with it. Okay, all right, no, uh, no problem, Dylan. We'll talk, we're gonna talk about this one again. So see if we can help that out. Okay, let's go ahead and, and let's, let's talk about this one. Uh, we have one more to do, so I don't wanna run out of time. Okay, so here we have, basically, we have our same circuit. We did not do anything different with it other than change the values. So on this first pulse, which is our, our positive pulse, we take that positive and we place the positive up here and the negative down here. We bring that positive over to here and then we bring the negative over to here because it's all same, the same contact points. Once we bring that over, we look at this positive right here and see how it relates to the diode in this position. Once we determine what, how it relates, then we can figure out if it's gonna be forward or reverse bias. In order for the diode to be forward bias, this has to match the polarity of this. So in this case, this is the cathode side, right, of our diode. And our cathode side represents the what, what polarity. The negative side. The negative side. So looking at this right here and this right here, do they match? No. No. Since they don't match, our diode is considered reverse bias. Okay. If the diode is reverse bias, then it, the diode is going to act like an open, like it's not even there, like we could take it out of the circuit. If that's the case, which it is here, it's in reverse bias, and we're talking about the first 
half cycle of this coming in, then since this is now open, this cycle, this first half cycle is just going to pass right on through to our output. So if that's the case, our first half cycle here is just going to pass through, which is our positive pulse, because our diode is reverse bias. Now, on the second part of our negative cycle that's coming through, we have to change things up a little bit. We have to change the polarities of our input signal. So in this case, now we have our negative coming through, which means our negative is up here this time, and our positive is down here this time. So that negative is going to be carried over to here, and our positive is going to be carried over to here. Is this the same as this point in polarity? Yes. Is it? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. So since they are, that means we have forward bias and we have current flow that's going to go through our diode in this direction. If current flow is throw, flowing through our diode, that means that RL is going to mimic whatever the value is across that diode. So on our negative output, when this is flowing at 100%, we have 0.7 volts. So it's going to start to go down and then clip off at 0.7 volts. Now this is in the negative side of our zero reference line. So that means that this, this 0 0.7 volts is a negative value. And then what did we come up with for our calculated value for the volts peak up here? What was it? 3.86 volts. 3.86 volts peak. And since this is on the positive side of our zero reference line, it's a positive value. Any questions? Yeah, I was just, I was just wondering what you were trying to ask me here. <laughs> Oh, no problem, no problem. Okay, so let's look at one more uh, real quick. All right, we have five volts positive coming in at the top, negative five volts on the negative side. Our R1 is 2.2K, our L is 4.7K. And then we're going to determine our values and output waveform based on this configuration. All right, so put that in the chat box when you come up with your answers. Remember, it's important to look at the position and polarity of the diode first. Brett, wow, perfect, Brett, good job. Okay, Dylan, okay, so Dylan, that's great on the negative side, what about the positive side? Perfect.
Artem, nice work. You got it. Okay, uh, Martin, I'm sure you just forgot a decimal, decimal point there, but Artem, that is good. Makaya, nice work. Uh, note, Dylan, that's going to be just the opposite when you have the positive at the top up there. So think about that again. If they match, remember, if they match, that means they're forward biased. Theo, excellent. Uh, Luigi, look at your uh, positive side again. Tess, perfect, nice work. Leroy, perfect, excellent. There you go, Luigi, awesome, you got it. Okay, uh, I think that's almost everybody. Does anybody have any, is anybody stuck on this one? Let me know. Uh, Dylan, check that again. Remember what the value would be when the diode is forward biased. Okay, all right, so let's take a look at this. So first of all, as you noticed, we turned our diode around. So our diode is now has been flipped upside down. So let's look what happens whenever we apply our polarities. So we have our first pulse here, which is our positive pulse. So we got our positive here, negative here. Positive is carried over, negative is carried over. Does this, match this in polarity. Yes. <clears throat> okay, if it does, which it does right here, they're both positive, that means our diode is gonna be forward biased in this condition, forward bias. If it is forward bias on our positive pulse, what is our output waveform gonna look like? Positive. Positive, right? And how far is it going to go up on that positive? 0 0.7 volts. 0 0.7 volts. Perfect. So here we have our positive 0 0.7 volts. Now we have our negative coming through and our positive here. So if that's the case, switch these around. We have our negative here and our positive here. Are these matching? Is this matching with this? No. No, it's not. So if it's not, that means it's in reverse bias. If it's in reverse bias, the diode acts like what? An open. An open, like it's not even there. So if it's acting like an open, that means our signal is just gonna pass right on through and our output waveform is gonna look like what? For the second cycle, second half of that cycle. It'll be negative. Negative, it's gonna be the whole negative minus the, di the resistance. So we have our output on the negative side, which is right here, passing through to our output over here. And then what value did we come up with on this negative side at the, at the peak? 
I got three. Negative three point four one. Yeah. Perfect. Negative three point four one volts peak. So you have to determine which way the diode is going to conduct at what polarity. All right, so the position of the diode is important. So you need to always check that first. And then you just go through this process every time. If the diode is forward biased, it's just going to drop that 0.7 volts, whether it's positive or negative, depending on the diode position. And then the other value, which this value right here, comes from our V out formula. 